Welcome to the Gospel Center Pro-Life Podcast. When a mom chooses life at the abortion center, of course we want to follow up with her, minister to her, get her plugged into a local church and resources. In this episode, we talk about how to do that, some general principles we think will encourage and equip you. Stay tuned. I felt your passion, I've touched your heart. Welcome to the Gospel-Centered Pro-Life Podcast. Appreciate you guys joining us. And as always, appreciate if you guys would share this podcast, share this episode, share just the podcast in general, all the episodes. I think we're at like a hundred and something. We are zipping along, 102, 103, maybe even 104. Yeah. We're up there in the hundreds. We are up there. Yeah. We've been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of episodes covering a lot of subjects. We try to cover subjects that really would equip and train you guys for sidewalk ministry and other areas of pro-life ministry as well, but really sidewalk ministry with a focus on the gospel for sure. Right. And in this episode, we want to cover something that we hope will, hope will be equipping for you guys, um, not just about, because we're not just pro-birthers, we're not just about being at the abortion center, but we're right. about following up mm-hmm. when a mom chooses life, mm-hmm. our goal is we want to get her plugged into a church. That's our ultimate goal. We want her discipled in the Lord. Yeah. So we don't want to just say, hey, choose life for your baby. Mm -hmm. See you later. Mm -hmm. We want her plugged in. We want that cycle of sin and death that she's caught up in, that we were caught up in at one time in our lives. Exactly. To be broken. Right. And we know that cycle is broken by the follow-up and by ultimately getting plugged into a local church, Mm -hmm. getting discipleship, mentoring, all that stuff. So we're going to talk about What that looks like, a mom has chosen life Mm -hmm. at the abortion center. You applied some of the other awesome principles that we gave you that are really from the word of God and from our experiences. And she chose life Mm -hmm. and she cut a 180 degree turn and not going into the abortion center. She's choosing life. She's leaving. And what do you do at that point? How do you handle that? She's coming out of the parking lot and I, I couldn't do it. How do you how do you take it from there? Right. Well, there's a whole bunch of things yeah. that that need to happen. And the first thing to recognize is many women do make that initial choice for life, but if there is not follow up, and sometimes even if there is, they still return yeah. to a board. And we're yeah. actually going to talk about that on another podcast, what to do in that case. Oh yeah. But so the first thing to recognize is they're returning immediately to the situation that they Left and nothing yeah. has changed yet. Yeah. Right. So, um, so we're ju- we're just in this podcast. We're just going to give some general general principles about what what are we going to do generally over yeah. the next few days, weeks to ultimately get them linked up with a with a mentor or with a church and hopefully on a path right. back to God. Yeah. So the first thing to remember is that those first hours and days are really critical. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because like you said, she's going to go back into that same situation. Mm -hmm. Just because she chose live at the abortion center doesn't mean that her boyfriend that was pressuring her to have the abortion is now going to be on board with her having the baby. Right. In fact, he might threaten her even more now because she's decided not to. So so actually the stresses may even increase. Yeah. As opposed to So she needs someone Mm -hmm. to help affirm that choice for life. Mm And that someone is likely going to be you, sidewalk yeah. counselor. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do that. So, so I want to I want to kind of give before we get into these kind of broader or even more deep principles, mm-hmm. just practical principles mm-hmm. of again, she stopped in the driveway on the way out. I couldn't do it. How do you take it from there? What, what's yeah. what's that look like? Yeah. Okay. Well, the first thing that I would do is hand her the literature with yeah. my name and number on it. Say, this is me. My name is Vicki. I am here to help you. And yeah. you may call this number at any time, day or night. When I'm sleeping, my phone's off. Don't ever be worried about waking me up. I will get back to you as soon as I wake up. Yeah. So I make sure she knows. She may contact me and, and give her my number. If I am with it, which some days I'm not. I get her number. Yeah. I'll often say, let, let me send you a text to make sure that you have my number. So right. that's the tricky way. Yeah, that's in case what I do. they're yeah, okay. In case they're a little bit worried about giving my number. I don't always remember to do this, but yeah. it's so good if if you can. And um usually they'll they'll 
give it to me yeah. and or they'll let me send them a text. And then I will say where I we give them a blessing bag. And if it, what that is, it's just a, a small um, gift bag yeah. with various baby stuff to remind them of the choice for life, yeah. baby bottles, blankets, things like that. And and then I tell her briefly, hey, can you pull over? And let me talk with you about the the resources that we have that can help you. Right. So that right from the get-go, she's got my name and number. I've got her name and number. She's already got something tangible that she can hold and drive home looking at that reminds her of the baby. We also put a Bible in there. Yeah. Um, and then the with the promise of more to come, that right. there's more resources to come. And then I let her know I'm going to be calling her probably that afternoon to discuss in further detail all the help we can offer. Right, yeah. So it's a conversation hopefully she wants to have and she's more likely to pick up the phone. I'm not going to go, I, I almost never say, and then I'm going to be sharing the gospel with you, right. even though that is fully my intention. But I know that that would probably scare away yeah. most of the women and they they might not let me, they might not pick up the phone. Right, yeah. So that's the immediate practical stuff that I do. Yeah. Is that, that kind of what you do? That's what I do. I okay. typically will try to get their phone number, because if you just give them your phone number and you leave it on them, mm -hmm. a lot of times either they're going to lose it or just right. they're not going to do it. So if I can get them in the moment right there, and typically I'll do it with the with the men, um, but I'll do it with the ladies too. And I'll even yeah. say, hey, can I have my wife follow up with you later? Or can I right. have Vicky follow up with you right. later? Yeah. Kind of push those off on the women more. Yeah. Cause it just, you don't want to look like not, a stalker. Exactly. Yeah. But it's not totally inappropriate uh -huh. to follow up. But I would get their phone number. I would. Right there, as I'm on my phone, I'd say, what's your number? I would text them, you know, put their phone number in the text thing, you know, and then yeah. put my name there, yeah. Daniel Parks, boom, right. send it out to them. Right. That way they've got my number, I've got theirs. And then later on in the day, probably if this happened in the morning, late afternoon, mm -hmm. early evening, something like that, shoot them a text and just say, hey, this is Daniel. This is the guy that you met at the abortion center or I might not say abortion center, I might say a preferred women's health center or something like that, or the women's clinic or something so that it's not so kind of out there, I guess, in right, case somebody right. else is looking at their phone Sure. and just wondering how things are going and just letting you know we're here and we're praying for you. So I'm just putting yeah. it out there. I've already talked about, like you, you mentioned, I've already talked about the stuff that we can do to help. And they've likely already told me what were their needs. Right. So I don't need to reach back out and find out what their needs are. And I don't need to reach back out and find and tell them, hey, we're going to help you. You've already told them that we would. I'm yeah. just going to reach back out to touch base with them and let them know that I'm praying for them. Right. Basically, let them know that I care. Yeah, exactly. And I will I will add to that. I often send a verse. I often pick a verse that I really think is an appropriate verse yeah. and say, I hope this is an encouragement to you. Right. So that I'm again introducing the idea of, of God. The people that this podcast is going out to may or may not have mentorship programs, may yep. not be involved with Love Life. But if you are, if you have a church backing, if you have mentors, it's really important to sign them up yeah. for that mentorship program as soon as possible. I know we've talked about this many times on podcasts. They have an, they had an appointment with death. Yeah. And they're so funny. So many times I'll hear women say, I got to go. I have an appointment. Yeah. And the same, they have an appointment with death when they're going in for an abortion, but the same, that same mindset that I've got an appointment, I need to keep the appointment, can work with you and with the choice for life if you can set up an appointment yeah. with the mentor. Yeah. So, so get them signed up for, right. for the mentor yeah. as, as so quickly as possible. And so you would call possible. them later on in that day That's and right. actually not just text them an encouraging text or something I'm praying for you, but right. you would just, you would call them and say, Hey, let me set you up with the mentor program. I would. Um, and two things, one other thing I wanted to mention when you said text, I definitely would text in yeah. terms of that first uh, little thing that you're, that little nudge, Hey, yeah. are you doing well? Because it's so much less intrusive than a phone call or right. even an email. And yeah. many people don't check email, but almost everyone ch sees that text and making it, so that they don't necessarily have to respond. Right. Sometimes I figured having it just show care without asking questions is is good because then they they don't feel put on the spot. And then the the next thing is is to yeah, I set them up with a mentor as as soon as possible. Yeah. 
if when you have stopped them, you said sometimes you already know the main issues. Right. Usually I know one, maybe, but not always. Actually, I don't always get that information. I, I will often ask what changed your mind because I want to be able to use that down the road right? Um, in counseling them. Because if it changed their mind once, hopefully it'll continue to change their mind. But um, but I, I, I don't often ask what the obstacles are until later in, right. in a more extended conversation, which I hope to have later that day. Okay. But anyway, who the counselor needs to stay in touch until the mentor is appointed right. or until you have followed up with a church or someone who is plugged into this yeah. woman's life. Yeah. And if you don't have, like you mentioned, if you don't have love life in your area and you're just getting this podcast as an individual is out there, maybe under your local church or whatever, I can guarantee you there are people within your local church that would be willing to, and maybe they can't go out to the sidewalk, but they'd be willing to raise their hand and say, I will walk alongside a mom yeah. that chooses life. Yeah. That's one of the ways that you can build relationships with churches actually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is reach out to churches and say, I you know, all I'm looking for is for people, I would normally say older women in your congregation, that could come alongside a young lady that chooses life for her baby. Do you have anybody like that? So if right. I was building a brand new relationship with a pastor, yeah. that's like one of the asks that I would give. Do you yeah. have an older lady in your congregation that you that comes to the forefront of your mind that would disciple and walk alongside a young lady that chooses life out here on the sidewalk? Right. Yeah. And make that connection. Let it be an organic connection. It doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be. And we've got like a mentor agreement and stuff mm -hmm. that we work through because we want there to be an understanding for the, the, the woman who's being mentored mm -hmm. and then the mentor, the ones who's doing the mentoring. Right. So that there's some kind of agreement there. We just found that to be really helpful to help solidify that relationship. And, and make the it expectations. Like, yeah, the expectations, the expectations are set. Yeah. Makes it official and all that stuff. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be like that. Right. It can just be an organic thing that happens yeah. as you make that connection. One thing I will say, though, the temptation for us being on the sidewalk is for us to do all all of the follow up, all of the mentoring, all of the relationship building. And one of the reasons why we set up the mentor program is so that the sidewalk counselors don't get burned out mm -hmm. because you can't do everything. You try to do everything and you'll do nothing well. Right. So handing off to a mentor is really important. And so that that handing off can become difficult because remember the woman, I know we've said this before, considers that first person who threw her a lifeline, which is the counselor. Yeah. They're like their best buddy. Yeah. Now, they they recognize that that person really saved them from a disastrous yeah, choice. Yeah. And sometimes it's very hard to transfer their trust from the counselor to the mentor. The sooner it happens, the better. A group text is a good way to do it yeah. um, or a group email where, or even a group call, FaceTime call. I, I usually do a group text where you're introducing um, them to the mentor. And it helps if the counselor who has originally counseled that woman already has a good idea of the obstacles that yeah, the woman yeah. faces. So you're going to get that hopefully within the next couple of days. So tell me about your situation, what it is that you're facing that we can help with. Tell me all your issues. And I'll, I'll say that. Tell me everything you're facing that is of concern. And while doing that, be careful never to promise really anything, but for sure don't promise what you can't provide. Yeah, be sure absolutely. that if you're going to make a promise, you know that you will be able to provide that. The last thing that woman needs is um, a betrayal. We, she's often probably had a lot of betrayal in her life, including the father of the baby who is probably telling her to abort. Yeah. So you want to be very careful to um, to promise carefully. So um, so that's one of the main points that that you want to be sure that you know the obstacles, maybe even know some of the resources. Yeah. In the area, Pregnancy Resource Center is one of the most key to yeah, know in absolutely. the area. And then you can share that with the mentor and then um, let her know because you're you're providing hope as the middle person before she's transferred to the mentor. You're keeping her hopeful. Yeah. So that she doesn't end up back at the abortion center right. in that interim. Yeah. Before yeah. there's someone that can disciple and follow her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, as in so many of... Our podcast, Introduce God, Introduce yeah. God r right away. And I don't know how you do it. I, I often just say, um, you've just made a, a really amazing choice for life. 
And I will, I will often say, what is the most valuable thing that you can give your child? They almost always say love. Yeah. And I say love is really important. But you know what? I think there's something even more important. And they're usually intrigued because yeah. they're thinking, what could be more important? They, they'll sometimes say money. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> no, not money. God. Yeah. And and then they'll usually agree with me and I'll say, well, can I talk with you about God? And then that can begin to introduce. That's that's often my introduction yeah. to how I will share the gospel, which I yeah. try to do within that first day or two. Yeah. We always want to like, it's not like we're requiring them to respond positive, p- positively to a conversation about Jesus right. or when we share the gospel, like. To get our resources, you have to be you have to give your life to Jesus or anything yeah. like that. But we do want them to understand that all of the things that we're doing, because we're helping them with a lot of stuff: baby shower, yeah. mentor mm-hmm. program, mm-hmm. connection with local resources, and all that stuff. Right. All of that flows out of our love for Jesus mm-hmm. and His love for them. Mm-hmm. So we're always we're always talking about the Lord. We're always talking about what God, um, you know, just bringing God into the equation. Yeah. Um. And of course, the point, like the whole point of why we're out here, the whole point of why we're encouraging you to choose life is because what God says about your baby and what God says about you and reiterating God's love for them and God's love for their baby and helping solidify as they're thinking about, because again, they're going back into a potentially a catastrophic situation Yep. to help build a fortification of hope for them, Mm -hmm. which, you know, God... God calls himself the God of hope. Right. And the, the God of hope, hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing. <laughs> and so we want to build this fortification of hope around them. And we do that by talking about the Lord and talking about his faithfulness, talking about his goodness. And uh, so you know, just continuing to talk about that is really helpful in, in helping her not to come back. I to agree the totally. I, and I, it's, I think it's even more critical in someone who's wobbly. Um, for the choice of life, that you're saying this is a shaky save. That's what we call them, shaky save. I'm not sure. She's not super convicted for the choice of life. Yeah. So the gospel is really critical. But I do, the point you made about make sure that they know that our resources are not linked to any decision they might make regarding Jesus, I flat out just say that. I say, I want you to know, I'm going to talk with you about the Lord because exactly what you said, this is why I do what what I do. This is why our ministry exists, is because uh, God has has told us we, we need to be out here, and it yeah. is out of our love for Him that we are trying to minister to you and help you. But I want you to know, no matter what you feel about God, or whether you make a decision to follow Christ or not, it will in no way affect whether we help you or not. Yeah. And so I think if you say that right from the beginning, you make sure there's no misunderstanding that we're trading acceptance of Jesus, submitting your life to Jesus for goodies, because that would be a very terrible message. Right, yeah. Yeah. So um, if she does respond by submitting her life to the Lord, which actually happens not infrequently, then it's important to follow up with the church. Yeah. And or at least offer a church or find a church that um that's willing to walk alongside her. Yeah, absolutely. And of course the ultimate desire is that the mentor would be the one that invites her to church and, right. and uh sits beside her at church. Right. I mean that's happened several times here yeah. in Charlotte and some of our other cities. Yeah, so that's the ultimate desire, but I think getting them to a church. Oftentimes, these, uh, at least for me, since I'm out there on Saturdays a lot. Yeah, uh, it's like the next day, right? The next day is yeah. Sunday, and so I'll invite them to church with me. Yeah, just to leave that door open. Like, right? Would you come to church with us? You can sit with our family. Yeah, and so, but getting them plugged into a church is, of course, really important because right. it's that discipleship piece that they yeah. need. Yeah. And a very important general principle, if she doesn't respond, keep trying. Don't give up. It is not uncommon for them not to respond. First of all, sometimes they're going home to total chaos. Other children. Yeah. They work a lot oftentimes. Um, Sometimes really not very desirable jobs that are late, late into the night or whatever, early, early in the morning. So if she doesn't respond, it doesn't necessarily mean that she's given up on the baby or that she doesn't want you to interact with her. Right. Don't give up. That is such an important point. 
keep trying, keep trying to to reach her. Yeah. I have seen that so many times when I have been on the brink of giving up and then just I feel God nudge me, don't, don't give up. And it's that next time that I reach out that she reaches back. Yeah. So absolutely, really, really important. Um, if she expresses doubt and wavering, and I'm, I've had that happen a lot too. Yeah. And so sometimes a text is not enough, uh, especially if they say I've made an appointment, I'm right. going back, and I have then often said, "Would you meet me for lunch?" Yeah. And they often will. Yeah. I, I say I'll I'll pay. <laughs> they yeah. get a free lunch. And and there's an opportunity face to face, which yeah. is probably always better if you've really got a a continuing abortion determined right. mom. So investing personally in them, it it's, it does take time and effort, and ideally a mentor would be doing that. But if there is not a mentor yet assigned, or maybe she has flat out refused a mentor, I I think sometimes we are called to go that extra mile. Because that baby's life is on the line. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, helping build that relationship and helping just let her see that you care for her outside of the scenario at the abortion center. That that's you, right. You are there for her. And again, the ultimate desire is that a mentor would do this. Yeah. That the body of Christ working together, different right. pieces. You know, the sidewalk counselor, the mentor, the churches, all that working together. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you've got to fill in at least for a while. Yeah. With that. You know, yeah, that missing and, piece, which is that relational piece for yeah. her. That's certainly biblical, not yeah. to give up, to, to persevere un, until you have gained the prize. And that's talking, of course, about um, eternal life. But the prize in this case is um, is the woman staying solid yeah. in, her, in her choice for life and hopefully turning her life over to the Lord. And let's say she's gotten a mentor. She has accepted a mentor. Yeah. The next pitfall for the sidewalk counselor, is you've just invested a lot in that woman. It may have only been two days' worth, but it, it's a huge investment. Yeah. And to just shut that off is often very difficult for the yeah. sidewalk counselor and it, to, like, then give her over entirely to the mentor. But you need to. Yeah, you need absolutely. to. And, um, and so the women also sometimes have a hard time dis- disconnecting from the counselor. And what we advise all of our counselors is you need to just say— have you talked to your mentor about this? When she yeah. continues to call you, which does happen again frequently, have you talked to your mentor about this? You need to contact your mentor and keep gently and kindly yeah. Push, yeah, pushing Yeah, don't her be back. a jerk about it. Hey, I can't talk to you. i got to be right. out here on the sidewalk. But <laughs> just let them know, hey, did so-and-so, especially if you know the mentor's name or whatever, did so-and-so, uh, have you reached out to them? Because they really would like to help you out with these things. Right. So yeah. be nice about it, but do the best you can to kind of push them in that direction of the mentor. Yeah. You can't do it all yeah. as much as you might want to. There have been times when it has been so difficult to connect the mom with the mentor and the mentor is a great mentor and she's doing great things with the mom where I've had to tell counselors, you're going to need to just not answer the phone. Right. From uh, there, there does come a point of kind of tough love right. because ultimately you don't want them to end the, with their trust in you. You're right. always transferring that trust with the ultimate goal that that trust is going to be in God. Yeah, absolutely. And their accountability is going to be the local church. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So those are kind of my main points okay. that that I've come up with in, in my follow, follow-up. Maybe you have others. Those are the main things I think that I uh, I try to make sure happen Yeah. when I've got a— um, a mom who has chosen life. Yeah. I mean, I think we could certainly just be out there. And we did a podcast about this where we'd be certainly justified in just standing out there and speaking against abortion, not offering yeah. any follow up. Yeah. We could certainly be justified in that because after all, they're killing children inside of there. Mm-hmm. You know, if there was a whole, you know, if there's a shooter going into the preschool and shooting up a whole preschool classroom of kids, and if we pleaded with him not to shoot those children, we would be justified in doing that without even offering any resource for him or for right. them or anybody. Right. It's like right. killing people, right? right? And we want to try to stop it. So um, that's true. Mm-hmm. We could be out there with just our voices and that's that's all. But how much better is it when a mom chooses life for us to be able to disciple her, mm-hmm. for us to be able to plug her into a church? And listen, here's the thing. This doesn't just serve that mom and that baby, right? It serve to disciple her and, and to 
bring her up and her child up in the ways of the Lord. But think of the blessing that is to that congregation that yes. has a mom that has yes. chosen life in their congregation. Yes. To be able to say, not not to point to her as a prize, but just to be able to say, here's what the Lord has done. I've had the midst. privilege of being a part of this story. So yeah. you just had that happen. I, well, I don't know if you were out there yet, but in, in Southern California, I saw that there was something like 1,500 people being baptized. Yeah. And, and there were lots of photos on Facebook of that. One of them was of a pregnant woman, very pregnant woman, yeah. who that church had discipled, mentored, and... Um, had been saved from abortion, yeah. that baby had been and and there they are as a church gathering and baptizing her. Yeah. I mean, that is such a, an encouragement and inspiration yeah. to the church to do what God has called them to do. Yeah, yeah. And you can better yeah. you better believe there's more people because of that that want a mentor. Right. That want to do this this discipleship thing, walking alongside a mom that chose life. There's more people that want to be out there on the sidewalk to get yeah. trained up. To help moms like that, to choose life, plug them right. into mentors and all right. of that. Right, And so it really is can be actually a catalyst for the church rising up and the church being stirred up yeah, and, and being the church, being the hands and feet of Jesus, because yeah. that's what this is all about. There's no doubt that when I talk with pastors and share stories, the actual stories of what happens out on the sidewalk— and the su- success stories, they are fired up, and they want to be a part of that. Yeah. So, so this is a um, a really important thing for the church, not just the sidewalk counselors, but the whole church to to be involved in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully, that was equipping for you guys. And uh, as always, we want to put our email addresses out there for you guys to to follow up with us and. Give us suggestions for podcasts. Maybe you have questions about this or other things that we've covered. You can reach out to me, Daniel at lovelife.org. You can reach out to her, Vicki at lovelife.org. We'd love to answer any questions that we can. And uh, I think that's it. So mm-hmm. until next time, God bless. God bless you all. Give me an outlet for love. Give me an outlet for grass. I know it will cost me my life But nothing's too precious since I met you